Jo, to potom. Yeah. So, welcome everyone. Uh, here I will do a quick introduction to the WordPress Polyglots team. Uh, and uh, it all starts with the WordPress mission statement. So the whole basic big idea about WordPress is to democratize publishing. And today, already more than states don't use US English, which means that they are uh, using translated versions of WordPress and uh, uh, this is very important because if we want WordPress to be available to allow people to publicize all over the world, then we should remember that only 5% of the world's population has English as their native language and only 15% of the world's population know English. So there are 85% of the world's population that would be able to use WordPress only if they had it available in their own language. And that is what polyglots is all about. Of course, as a WordPress team, we need to have our Vapu, and we even got several of them. He may be wearing a hat or not. He may be talking more about communication or more about different languages, but he always has this very nice feather pen. So now you know what um, <laughs> Polyglot looks like when you meet them in the street. And the Polyglot is one of the ways you can contribute to WordPress, give back to the project without even knowing any programming languages. Um we still work with languages, of course. We need to understand English well enough to say the same thing in our own language in a way that makes it possible to use WordPress. And like everything WordPress, this is all volunteer-based. So uh, when you translate WordPress, when you validate strings, when you act like I, like I do as a global mentor for the Polyglots team, it's all volunteer contributions. And we are very thankful for this because this is an important part of WordPress. Here I have gathered quite a few useful links. In the invitation to this meeting, you can open a PDF with uh, these, these slides, so we will have all these links available. Uh, we have our own Slack channel, of course, it's named Polyglots, and if you happen to not be on Polyglots yet, you can join via the link in the first row. In the second row, uh, you have uh, a list of all the Polyglots teams, and there you can click through and open to see names of the people who are on your specific team and uh, also a lot of teams have slack or some other way for their own communication in their own language we currently don't use the global wordpress slack for that so uh, most of them are on the slack free uh, service where you get 90 days of history but that is, of course, enough to coordinate your work, ask someone to give feedback on your translated strings, and so on. And in the same slacks, very often you also find discussions about uh, setting up some meetups or uh, preparing for um, uh, a WordCamp, and so on. And also, in some cases, you have some help happening there, although, of course, we've in several of the uh, 
localized WordPress instances. We also got a localized support forum that be may uh, that may be more or less active. Of course, we've got our own handbook, uh, so you uh, can see it here, and uh, there you find a lot of information. Uh, some are about the general expectations for the translations and also about how we work and what different rules we've got and uh, links to various local resources like i said here local slack teams but also we've got uh, glossaries style guides and so on and we also got uh, various additional tools. A lot of active development is happening right now with how you can use machine translation and so on. And uh, in the handbook, you will find links to get started around these things. The translation itself is located on a translation platform, translate.wordpress.org. And if you at any point want to see how the uh, translations are moving, what locales have a lot of um, uh, unchecked translations or what locales are at 100% on the core translation, then this uh, last link, translatewordpress.org uh, stats, uh, will show you at a quick glance how the important translations are moving. To get started, uh, you would, of course, first need to register an account with WordPress.org. And uh, the link for that is in the first uh, line here. And on that page, you can actually ask to get the same page in a different language if you want to. A lot of languages are available. And to communicate with the team, you would also need to join Slack. And the global Slack team for WordPress contributors, you can join uh, by going to this make.wordpress.org slash chat. So notice that you, this is not on the main WordPress domain, but on the make one, where we have all the contributions happening. And uh, on the polyglots, uh, on the make wordpress.org slash polyglots slash teams, you can find people from your own team. And next, you go to this translate.wordpress.org and find your own locale. If it is, if your locale, your language is not uh, defined yet in WordPress, then you can go to the handbook to find details about how to request a new locale. And uh, then, of course, you will need to find some people to do this together because it's a huge task to build a new translation. And uh, find also some. Uh, already experienced GTE, perhaps from a different locale, who would be happy to help you a bit with some tricks on getting started. Perhaps if your language is very much like a different language, perhaps you can reuse a translation that someone has already done for a different language and so on. And uh, let's look at some pages, what this looks like. So if you go to translate.wordpress.org, then you will see this huge list of all defined languages and in the top field you can filter here to quickly uh, see just the language that you are looking for so i just entered two uh, letters here and on the swedish was left so i click to contribute translation or well not i did it was the test account i used <laughs> And uh, here we are on the main page for Swedish. You can see that we've got various uh, places for your, uh, where you can translate. So WordPress is the core translation of WordPress itself. Teams are uh, translations for the free WordPress teams that are published in our uh, team directory. Those are teams that are made available by volunteers for anyone to use around the globe. Plugins in the same way is where we do translations of 
WordPress plugins that are in our plugin directory and made available for anyone to use. Patterns is where we translate or can translate uh, various patterns that are available for use in the lock editor uh, to make the sample text and the descriptions uh, available in various languages. This is a huge project and not all locals have translated much here, but uh, there are some who are really brave and doing that. And uh, <laughs> I, I must say it's... Vita uh, is the interesting part. Uh, that is where we have all the projects that make up the wordpress.org site. So if you have your, we call them Rosetta, the localized ver versions of the WordPress main site, uh, all things that you can see there, except for the content itself, is translated through the Meta project. And that is also where you got strings to help you localize a WordCamp uh, theme. If you are using the ordinary theme for your WordCamp, then you may want to translate the WordCamp project. Uh, you can also translate, uh, well, WordPress.org uh, to get your Rosetta translated and so on. Apps is uh, for the uh, iOS and Android app. And um, there may be some peculiarities if you want this to be available in a language that is not yet uh, defined. Uh, but you can always contact in the main Polyglots channel if you want to ask for it. Stats is a special uh, page where you can find the most popular, globally, most popular plugins and themes and see how much of them are translated uh, to your language. And this is the place where Nilo suggested that we should be able to hide some plugins that are not really using the translations that uh, come from this platform so that people don't spend time on translations that won't be used. Uh, on the right side, you can see that you can uh, filter or sort for uh, in which order all the projects you see here uh, are. So if you, for instance, go to the plugins page, then you can filter or sort, uh, sort in such a way that you see all the plugins where you still need to translate something, but they are, well, only a few strings needed to reach 100%. So if we go to the list of the most popular plugins, it looks like this for Swedish. And uh, some of these projects are not at 100%. And we, if we go to one of them, we can see here that this plugin uh, that we just opened here uh, is, if you look at the first line, the stable latest release, you can see that the plugin itself is fully translated, but the README, that is the content of the localized plugin page for this plugin, uh, is on uh, is only part, partially translated, about 50%. And many uh, locals actually do like this. Um, they put most effort on translating the plugin itself. And when you have at the first time reached 90%, the plugin pack, uh, package will be, a uh, language package will be generated and the plugin is translated. Uh, but for the readme, there are usually some strings that are less important. Those could be like some notices about what was changed uh, or fixed in the latest versions. And uh, if those strings aren't translated, that is usually not a big deal. As long as you have the most important things translated that tell you what this plugin actually will do. The plugin, uh, the translation interface itself looks like this. 
so a, a string that is translated and approved shows like green uh, a string that is not yet translated shows in white and then we have another couple of colors like red and yellow yellow is for pending translations translations that need to be verified before they get public and if you open up as one of these items you will see something like this so in this field enter translation here we could write the translation of uh, this source string and Oh, if there was a very similar string translated before for this language, it might show up here under translation memory. If we would open this other languages, we could see how this very string has been translated to some other languages. And the same information we can also open here on the right side. So the meta block here is where we can have actions like approve a translation or disapprove it or, or reject it. Uh, disk is short for discussion, where we can have discussions, comments on uh, various translations and uh, questions perhaps to the developer. Hist is about history, translation history, how this very string has been translated before, if there are any previous translations. Uh, TM is about translation memory. It's the same thing that we could see here below the translation. And other is for other languages. So you can see that the same information here is actually visible or can be visible in two different places. And the reason here is that this is being actively developed as we speak. So um, this may change a little bit, uh, but the main idea will still remain the same. Uh, the short way of sending in a translation to suggest it, or if you are a translation editor to save it, is to use shift enter. And the short way to copy the source string, if you want to use it and just change what needs to be changed for your language, is with control plus enter. And for those of you who are uh, reviewing strings, if you are happy to be on a keyboard that has numeric keys on the right side, then you can use control and plus to approve and control and minus to reject. And that will allow you to work a bit clicker than, uh, quicker than if you only use your mouse. So currently, the polyglot Steam status, as of yesterday, as I mentioned before, 56% of all WordPress sites use a translated versions of WordPress. Some of those are still English, like uh, English uh, Great Britain, English uh, South Africa, but I would say that at least 50% of all WordPress sites are all on non-English now. In our system, we've got 202 different languages defined uh, and a total of 208 different variants because, for instance, German uh, have two different variants. One is the default where they have the informal address and uh, then they've got the formal address where they use Z rather than do. And we've got these things in a couple of languages. Right now, 68 locales are up to date and released with WordPress 6.2. And most of these are in well shape for WordPress 6.3 that, that is about to be released in a week or two. Right now, overall locales, we've got 730 global translation editors defined. Uh, here, you should note that a few people are GTEs for several languages, and therefore they may count two or three times. In the same way, we've got 5,535 users defined as translation editors for one or more 
projects that could be a team or a plugin or several teams and several plugins. And here again, a few users are defined for several languages. And we've got a total of 66,000 active translation contributors over the last year. So I usually say that WordPress Polyglots is the biggest team of them all. And Polyglots is not the only place where translations happens. So uh, the documentation team also does translation to a few languages. And we're looking into how we can cooperate in a good way for content translation, but we aren't there yet. And this is one of the topics that will be discussed at the community summit in August. Um, unfortunately, I will not be able to go. The training team also has contents in different languages and are looking at ways to keep track of this content and making it easier to find things you need. The marketing, marketing team also uh, looks into content in various languages. And WordPress TV, of course, has content in different languages and they do subtitling so that even if content is in a language you don't know, you could still watch it and understand what you said. Rosetta content is about uh, the content that various language teams can put directly in their news section or in their handbook section on their team's site. And that is something that happens locally for each local team. And that was... <laughs> My presentation, it's time for questions. 